Hi folks, welcome to the Sydney Tramway Museum. We hope that you find your visit here today both uh, entertaining and enjoyable. Now your guides for the day will be uh, Darren Rawlings and myself, Norm Chin. Well, here we are at one of Sydney's familiar red and white tram stop posts. Red and white being the colour chosen uh, for the tramway system and used on all of its major signs for the whole of its life. Now, I think uh, we should start off by drawing your attention to the uh, various titles or ownerships of the tramway over the years. Now, for the first 50 years of its life, it was the New South Wales Government Railways and Tramways. And then in the last uh, 30 odd years, it had about five changes of title. Uh, as history tells us, of course, the changes of title did little to improve the service. In fact, I guess we could say it'd be the reverse. But uh, as far as this museum is concerned, it's mostly concerned, or it's entirely concerned with the electric system uh, and mostly covers the early period. Now, we're standing outside one of uh, the many elevated signal boxes, which were quite a feature of Sydney, uh, as distinct from most tramways around the world, where their point work and all their major features were controlled from ground level. But because this was a part of the railway system, it uh, goes without saying that they simply used railway technology uh, in their tramway department. So what we have here uh, is one of the elevated signal cabins. This particular one, uh, as the sign will tell you, stood on the corner of Liverpool and Elizabeth Streets in Sydney, outside Museum Railway Station and uh, opposite Mark Foy's uh, shopping complex. Now these elevated signal cabins were in effect um, minor flats I suppose you could say because they were completely self-contained. The signalman had uh, a wash basin and toilet, he had a fan for cooling, he had a heater for the heating and he had cooking facilities which enabled him to remain in the cabin for the whole of his eight hour shift. We could hardly have him running down the steps and dashing off to the nearest toilet when required or conversely going over to the shop to buy his morning tea. So they really had to be self-contained and they certainly were. These cabins contained the standard railway uh, frame as it was called, the levers which controlled the various point works. And uh, we had quite a large number of them in Sydney, all of the major junctions in the city and in the uh, outer suburbs to a degree were covered by these boxes. Some at ground level, but most of them were elevated. 